The third round of the cup brought its usual surprises. And to report on our match of the round comes Geoffrey Peck. The cameras had gone to Scunthorpe, where preparations for the match against Tottenham went on all week. The old showground was made to look like new, all ready for Scunthorpe's reception of the league champions. The men of Lincolnshire had put in some special training. Though a third division side, they felt they had a good chance. And trainer Bill McCorkle put it this way. I think we have a very fine chance of beating, uh, drawing or even beating the Spurs. Now, viewers, I should like you to meet Jeff Barker, uh, captain of this club. Jeff is an experienced player. He's played with Huddersfield Town and must have had many similar types of cup ties. Now, Jeff, what do you think of our chances tomorrow? Well, Bill, I think if we can reproduce the form that we showed in the last round against Millwall, then the Spurs will have to fight every inch of the way if they're to go back from Scundorp on the winning side. And the men around Jeff Barker put in all they knew to make their skipper's dream come true. For the first time in the club's history, they went to the seaside for special training, training that was rounded off last week on their own ground. Two years ago, Scunthorpe went even in the football league. One more reason why Saturday was such a big day in the town's history. It began with an early morning invasion by a special train from London, carrying more than a thousand Tottenham supporters. The Tottenham fans had braved a journey of more than five hours to see their team in action. And with rattles and bells, they let Scunthorpe know that they had arrived. The 54,000 citizens of Scunthorpe were determined to make this a day to remember. The special arrangements were made to get as many as possible into the ground. In the words of the Chief Constable, Superintendent Nola, with regard to uh, our special arrangements, we have an emergency police station at the Baths Hall. We're employing uh, walkie-talkie apparatus, and I'm being reinforced by officers from other parts of the county. With regard to the result of this match, well, I, what I say may be used in evidence against me by Tottenham, but uh, I'm now off to make arrangements for Scunthorpe United to play in the next round and the orders of the chief constable were smoothly put into action by the men under his command. Yet even the best arrangements couldn't prevent a scramble that showed just how much of Scunthorpe had caught cup fever. Unlike the scene outside, there was an air of complete calm in the Spurs dressing room. Though the league champions knew they'd have to fight, a skipper Ronnie Burgess and his men were quietly confident that they could deal with anything that came along. And Les Medley and his colleagues were sure that they could always score more goals than Scunthorpe, even though the third division men had different ideas. And just before going into the fray, a Scunthorpe were given their final instructions by their skipper Jeff Barker and their coach Bill Corkill. In the absence of a manager, it's Mr Corkill who's in charge of the team. By 2.15, more than 22,000 people had crowded into the old showground. And the men of Scunthorpe were given the sort of welcome only a cut crowd can give. But the reception was almost as great for the visitors, Tottenham in their lily-white shirts. <laughs> they began a game that was, I'm afraid, just a little bit one-sided. The Londoners were on top most of the way, and they knew it. Scunthorpe had their moments, true enough. But all too often, it was just one-way track. The Spurs forwards moved smoothly and sweetly, and it became a question of how many goals. They scored a third time through Bailey. <laughs> Scunthorpe's great day was over. Hard as they had fought, they couldn't beat the big odds stacked against them. And the question now is, can Spurs do the same to Newcastle? 